Welcome everyone. Welcome to 2020 After the Fledge uh, Year Roundup. And we are coming to you live from Command Central. Um, our uh, very fancy Command Central here. So um, hope you're staying cool today. It is definitely warm here in Decorah. Um, it has heated up since we we uh, uh, started this morning and uh, well things are going to heat up with some raptors coming up here. We'll show you some neat stuff. Uh, so got a couple videos to show you. Got a wrap up pretty much of the of the year here and I'm going to just go to voiceover mode and we will switch audio or leave audio and switch to video here. Now I left my old after the fledge picture here because I thought it was really fitting. Um, I love this picture of Mom Decora. Uh, beautiful picture of her, very high definition. She's got that twinkle in her eye. You can see that. And uh, when we came here yesterday morning, when I was on the road coming down here, one of our cam operators, uh, Rewrap, told me that uh, we uh, we had Mom on the maple tree. and. Uh, took a really neat shot of her and I'm going to show you that uh, um, there we go so it was almost like she was saying welcome to everyone it is after the fledge she's got her wings open welcoming everyone to the virtual after the fledge so that's it was just an amazing shot, just a beautiful uh, shot from the camera, from one of our cameras here. And we just thought we would use this as our after the fledge uh, theme here. So let's get started again. Welcome. Uh, welcome to Virtual Decora. So I guess we talk about, uh, we're going to start in here with the, the, the Core Eagles, but we talk about as the cottonwood sways, and uh, I just I just want to mention, you know, just how unique I think that this whole Decor Eagle education uh, program is, and the cam, and all the folks that watch, all of you that watch the, the Decor Eagle cam, the Decor North cam, uh, the Eagles there. We've also got uh, Excel Energy out in Fort St. Vrain, the Bob and Rob's first eagle cam out there, you know, just uh, the eagles and the other raptors, it, but especially the decor eagles. It just is such a special thing. Um, I don't know that there's anything out there like this. I know that there's nothing out there like this. So um, I, I guess uh, it's neat, neat to be a part of that, and I'm, I'm glad that you're a part of it. And it's, uh, it's a, it's a great group of people, and a great group of fans too. So. Let's talk about the Decor Eagles. So what was going on last year um, as we were moving into the, the season? So we were at the uh, second year after mate change, which is it's a pretty big deal in the raptor world. Everybody talks about mating for life and things like that um, with eagles. And you know we know that that's not true. If there's something that happens, uh, unfortunately, just like what we had happen with uh, Dad Decora, we had it happen with uh, Mrs. North. Uh, we recently just had a, a raptor, you know, female falcon change at our Great Spirit Bluff Cam with Michelle. Uh, so it happens. Uh, so last year was interesting because we had the first year of DM2 on the nest, and we weren't sure what was going to happen. Um, early season ending, basically, after uh, the eaglets... Uh, um, fell from the nest, fledged from the nest, and went into rehab at SOAR. Uh, basically, it was really kind of questionable, you know, what is that attraction, uh, nest site fidelity for a brand new male at a site? You know, is he going to come back? The season was truncated there. So so we wondered that. We wondered what was going to happen. And then uh, after, after DM2 leaves, uh, quite interesting, this young male sub-adult, uh, which uh, we thought was probably around four years old based on the salt and pepper content of its white head. 
Um, and we, I did, we went back and we, we had good enough photos from the cameras that we could tell that this is a, a sub-adult that had been here before. It had been there earlier in the year. Um, but so this young sub-adult male shows up and decides to practice nest building. And Mom Decora just uh, is like, show me your stuff. She, she didn't stop him. <laughs> she didn't uh, really jump in and help much either, too. So we know that eagles are nest builders. And, and after this very interesting occurrence happened, we were talking to our eagle experts, and they, they definitely thought it was interesting, but also commented that it's pretty, that's, a, that's not that out of the ordinary for young young eagles to uh, to do that, to do some practice nest building and things like that. So, um, but anyway, it, it threw some, some potential questions, you know, is DM2 going to come back? Is this young male going to finish this nest? And are we going to have a nest uh, competition between N1 and N2B? Really didn't know what was going to happen. So um, what was I thinking? What were we thinking? It's like, uh, what do we do when we can't figure out what's going to happen and we need to try to take care of all the avenues? Put in more cams, right? So that was what we did. Um, we had that uncertainty, so we put more. We put another camera, which we don't show much of, but it is a camera that would have given us good views of the an, an N1 nest if they would have built it. So um, we basically we're trying to cover all of our bases. Um, so anyway, DM2 did return. I still have the photo, I think, on my, my phone of uh, that first uh, early morning shot of him coming in. And that always is the most incredible feeling to know that it looks like the eagles are going to come back to the nest and just how much that means to everyone. So that was really exciting to see DM2 return. And the courtship begins. Um, so, and we know now, successful flag of both D33 uh, first uh, last fall, and then D32, uh, um, I think it was in April, early April of this year. So uh, we had success, uh, and thanks again to the folks at SOAR for the excellent care that they gave to our Decor Eagles last year. And uh, um, so let's take a look at some other stuff here about the decor eagles. Um, I put this up. Uh, I just got a couple videos that that really stuck out in my head. They're not necessarily the ones uh, that uh, you know fuzzy eaglets being hatched or anything like that. But I just uh, you know here's here's a really neat video of some pair bonding, sticks being brought into the nest, and just interaction between. Mom Decora and DM2. It's it's always cool to see that. It really you know shows their commitment to each other, and that we're getting ready for a season. But I am going to queue up this video and show this to you. Switch over here. Combine the audios. So what I want you to take a look at here is you are you will be able to see and hear DM2 grab this stick. So I will be quiet here. I've got audio set up and I think the video set up here too. DM2 comes up. And now we've got a stick dance. And this was just hilarious. I don't have an audience for you guys to be laughing here, but I know you're probably chuckling to yourself. Who's going to win out on this one? DM2's got it. Mom's got it. DM2's got it. Mom's getting testy. DM2 says, well, if you're going to be that way, then fledge the stick. <laughs> and then the luck between the two. DM2 shifts gears, though. It's like, okay, here's another stick. Let's get moving on something else. 
Um, there is one other really interesting spot on this video, and I'm going to quick fast forward a little bit. Um, love it to see the scraping of the nest bowl. Um, DM2 does get down here. Let's play this a little bit. You can tell where he wants the eggs to be laid, and I believe that that's where she laid the first egg. All right. And now he gets up here. So, back to our presentation here. So, mom and DM2 stick work. That was pretty cool. What do we got up next here? Another favorite video that, that uh, I thought was really amazing. And there's a couple things that are notable here. We've got, uh, we've got DM2 coming in to the nest with a fish. And that's, that's uh, you know, we've seen that before. We've seen a, a nice food gift come in before. Uh, eggs being laid, but um, he stays on the nest. This is really interesting. Um, and we always wonder, you know, with the false alarms, is mom really going to lay that egg? And when DM2 came up with a big trout and a big fish, and she sat there and totally ignored it, it looked pretty much like this was going to be a serious thing here. So let's, let's watch this. I'm going to cue this one up. So mom is just kind of checking things out. And let's let's fast forward here a little bit. All right, here we go. Here comes DM2. Normally, her tea kettle would be going right now. She would be going for that thing, and it would be, you know, pretty much over. Although DM2 does that. He, he holds his own food kettle. But uh, normally, this would have been long gone by now. So, interesting. You know, the other note I just wanted to mention here, which is really cool, is, is uh, I don't think I've ever seen an egg laid with a male eagle in the nest this long. So we know that she's serious right now. DM2 is like, what is going on? I brought you this beautiful big fish for supper. And um, what am I supposed to do with this thing? And then mom just evacuates. So, and she's doing that kind of stance, looking down between her legs. So we know things are serious. I'm going to move forward here a little bit and get to the point where DM2 leaves. But... I think this is really cool because that's done. As she is laying this egg, we can hear the contractions, chirps. I'm going to be quiet. And that is so neat to see when we've normally seen this happen at, at night or at dusk. Let's, uh, let's fast forward a little bit. She did lay that. We could see that it was moist uh, with looking at the egg from different camera angles. And a little bit out of the area, but that's pretty darn close to where DM2 was scraping. So, um, 
first egg of the season. What a season it would be, huh? Who would have known 2020 was going to turn out the way that it did? All right. Back to our presentation here. So, eaglets, you know, on went the season. We had hatching of eggs. We had all three. Uh, we only see two heads here. Um, almost certain that that's DM2. Quite, quite a shot there of him with two of the eaglets. If, if if, uh, I think they were all hatched by then, one's just not in view. So, interesting. I want Let's talk about the Decora Eagles and the food source that they have. We've talked a lot about, in the past, about Decora Fish Hatchery Nest and the Decora North Nest and how they're different. And, sorry, I just realized that I'm not showing you these slides. Just going to go back quick and show you. Here's DM2 feeding the eaglets. And now let's move forward here. So let's talk about eagle meal time. So between the two, we've seen some, some rough times in other years with just kind of a shortage of food up at the North Nest. Doesn't have the fish hatchery here, you know, in the prime location with fish at will, um, does have a trout creek real close by, but very interesting to see the breakdown between fish versus mammal prey, and I really got a shout out here to our, our, our prime researcher on this and gathering this information, Sherry Elliott, um, and the cam operators and other watchers that help uh, put this data together, but this is tabulated. Uh, very, very uh, closely here. With year two of mom and DM2, they're almost equal in provisioning the, the prey providing to the eaglets, D34, 35, and 36, with a total of 686 meals seen on camera. So interesting to take a look. Uh, that included 335 meals provided by mom and 346 meals provided by DM2. That is amazingly equal. Um, that is really, you know, and it's great information to really kind of look at those trends and see. Um, uh, and as Sherry mentions, it's almost equal again, which would indicate that we had a similar breakdown between the two last year. So five times fledgling self-fed on carrion they found in the creek, so that's included in there too. Pretty cool, very interesting research information. Let's take a look at how that broke down. Uh, Left-hand column, we've got the larger numbers, which of course starts with fish, trout, rough fish, uh, sucker fish, and things that come in. 644 fish deliveries. Then squirrel and rabbit, which we know that they love squirrels. Uh, 10, eight rabbit, three raccoons, two ducks, one, two deer, two birds, pheasant, chipmunk, mink, field mouse, toad, which was really interesting. Um, some, some people commented, you know, what was that? Are they going to get sick? You know, and uh, I think that's the first time we've ever seen a toad come up into the nest, any nest that I've watched. Um, un unidentified food object, UFO, mystery meat, five of those. Uh, possum carrion found in the creek. Uh, that would have been just recently, I think. Uh, that's five meals. So, Pretty amazing and great research, like I mentioned. Let's shift over to Decora North. And I have that mislabeled. It shouldn't be Mom and DM2 there. It should be Mr. North and DNF. Decora North female and Mr. North. So scratch Mom and DM2. We're talking about the North Nest here. So just a beautiful shot there. There You can tell that there's some weather front that's moved through. Just how resilient these eagles are. It's just amazing. And with the sun shining on the mist in the morning here, I just thought that that was an amazing photograph to show and start out with the Decora North Nest. It's been an amazing year there. So 
second year after mate change, new nest built in 2018. And that really, you know, second nest building, eagle nest building research project that we've had here, Raptor Resource Project uh, since 2015. Um, DNF, you know, two things happened. DNF came in in 2018 uh, as a new mate, and we also had nest come down and a new, built a new nest. So two pretty drastic major changes for that nest. Um, I specifically remember we put the trout up there. Uh, we put at least two to three trout um, thanks to the hatchery helping us out there. Um, and we saw this big, beautiful eagle come into that nest, and I still will never forget that. Um, we really couldn't identify that eagle as, as Mrs. North or Mr. North, and we thought it you know, we weren't sure if it was a male or a female, but I just remember everybody remarked that it was a big eagle. And um, as time would go on, I'm, I'm pretty sure, and maybe others have come to this conclusion too, that that was probably our first sighting of our new female DNF. Um, but uh, so uh, what happened? The new nest and the mate changeover worked out just fine that first year. Um, we did, uh, we, I, if you remember back, DNF did have a little bit of a leg injury. A lot of people were worried about that. She was kind of limping while she was taking care of the eaglets that first year. Uh, so um, she's done well. So how would DNF and Mr. North handle the early loss of, of DN9 uh, last year? You know, we've had two years where we had two hatch and we lost one. This year was the same. Uh, with D losing DN11, but how would they handle that? You know, DNF, just like DM2 here, first year, not much going on, eaglets are gone, will it? Will she come back? Um, she did, and it's been a great season. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more looking through the videos and stuff here, but we did have the two eggs hatch, Everyone was very happy about that. We had two eaglets, and unfortunately, I believe it was while eating a prey item, something got lodged possibly in DN11's uh, uh, crop or throat or whatever, and uh, it did not make it. So a very sad day for the North Nest. Um, we have had one triumphant eagle, though, raised, being raised here. Um, getting all the food itself, getting all the attention itself, DN12 has captured the hearts of, of the watchers, and uh, there's, there's so many people that love watching DN12 this year. Um, it's been an amazing year, and we've had extended season here for Eagle Watchers. It's just been so fun to watch DN12. Um, I'm going to fast forward to the next slide. Uh, just a, a quick shot of DN11, um, DN12. And I did want to show a video, DN12 at play. It just is characteristic of what we've been watching here. I think it's, it's so neat to watch uh, DN12. Um, here's some footage of DN12 up on the nest. And I guess what else do you do when you're your only, only eaglet in the nest? You play around with your prey items. You play around with sticks. So uh, DN12 probably has gotten a little bit more practice at doing stuff by his or herself. I'm sure a lot of you guys have fig think you figured out whether DN12 is male or female, but I'm not going to say what I think here. Don't want to disappoint you if you didn't have the right one. All right, so let's take a look at this video. I'm going to fast forward. We can see DN12 working on something there. And here we go. Here's where I wanted to start. I think he decides to have a fight with a white oak leaf here. Or she. And I can just hear all the oohs and ahs in the background here. Um, I'm sorry with this uh, virtual. I wish I could be enjoying this in person with you. 
I'm going to move ahead just a little bit. Oh, here, yeah. We're going to taste some oak leaves here. Just fun to watch this eagle jumping around the nest, getting frisky, learning new skills, testing things out. And this is post fledge. Oh, going after that stick. Touche. That is what it's like to be a young eagle, fledged, ruler of your nest. And I'll tell you what, when DN12 goes after a food prey item that mom uh, or that DNF or, uh, or Mr. North bring in, um, it is a food fight chase. And I think that they're just, just like here at Decora, it is let me get away from you as fast as I can. <laughs> We'll take a look at a nice soar off of the nest here, and then we'll move on here. DN12 spends a lot of time over Creekside. A lot of time over by the creek. All right. So, DN12 at play, you can just see and almost feel the joy of being an eagle watching that footage, and that is what it's been like at the Decor North Nest this year. So, let's talk about the food. Let's talk about the food at Decor North and mealtime. So, year-round check there. And I'm going to turn off the audio that I left on on that clip. I think we're good now. Um, so at the Decor North Valley, um, there's a variety of fish. Uh, also rely heavily on on other protein, just like in Decora, um, mammal, birds, whatever. Had a total of 340 meals seen on camera, including 164 meals provided by DNF, 174 meals provided by Mr. North, and two deliveries or drops to the pasture where they were unable to, we were unable to identify the parent, you know, the cam ops or, or us. So one of those drops was a raccoon head, which DN12 quickly stole, toted it to the, to the nest or home up to eat it. So pretty neat to uh, look at the numbers there. And look at how equal that is. Again, just like here in Decora, pretty darn close. If you did the statistics on that, that is within a couple percentage points. Pretty interesting, you know, and year on year to have that equal of uh, food delivery. I think that's great information. So how did it break down? Decor North prey variety. Of course, fish, 200. By far outweighing anything else. Again, squirrel and rabbit and raccoon. I think that's very similar to Decor here. Although muskrat, fawn, Birds, pheasant, duck. Oops, I got duck in there twice. There wasn't four ducks, just two. Groundhog, mole, possum, coot, skunk, and definitely placenta from the uh, the cattle that are giving birth. The, the called cowgetty, <laughs> and fur bone pelts. Uh, something that obviously wasn't identified, and then. Uh, uh, maybe I think that might have been 13 meals off of one item that Cherry uh, tallied here. But uh, and then unidentified food object, uh, mystery meat bits. Uh, who knows what? About 47. So uh, pretty interesting what we've got there for a breakdown and how close a lot of this is. What are the top food items and categories by species? Uh, very similar to Decora. 
Here's a shot that I uh, put in there and Amy agreed. Just a, a beautiful shot of DN12. You can see a little bit of a collar there, a lack of feathers from scratching, and, and that's from the black flies. Uh, this is a time of year where they do get bothered and we will see, you know, while, while the adult eagles are going through molt um, and scratching from flies and things like that, I think Mr. North, we've seen that kind of collar too. But a beautiful shot of a young, just post fledged eagle there. All right, let's move on. Orchestral Cam, our partnership with Cornell Lab of Ornithology. We love working with those guys. It's such a great resource of information with raptors and all birds. Um, very interesting, the research that's been coming out um, about birds in general and migration patterns and just uh, die-offs and changes in birds. So um, it's a great partnership. Also with uh, Neil Reddick and Laura Johnson, our partners out on the farm. Um, we're in our third year of the live camp. Uh, we had male and female kestrels there. I think it's been, Neil said, like 28 years and, and counting, you know, at that uh, nest box uh, at, uh, at the farm there. Um, laid five eggs total, beautiful. I remember seeing a picture of them laying just like a star, five eggs, one in the middle and, and the others around are in a perfect star pattern. Um, shortly after that, the female went missing. Um, and it was just, you know, devastating for the Kestrel fans. Um, we don't know for sure, but uh, we understood that uh, Cooper's Hawk had been hanging out around the farm there, and that's a pretty common occurrence. Um, Kestrels are potential prey for Cooper's Hawks. Um, it's kind of like that in the, in the raptor world. Uh, there are a lot of uh, raptor species that in different times of the year when food is needed for raising young and things like that, there are uh, prey items taken and stolen from other nests and sometimes it is uh, live, live birds, which is unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. We did have some interesting stuff. Um, uh, here you can see uh, our male kestrel and a female in the nest box and I'm just going to show you a quick video here of uh, the male kestrel bringing in breakfast. And this isn't cow ready, but this is a snake. And she doesn't want anything to do with that one. <laughs> Uh, either she'd already eaten or that just was not uh, what she was thinking of. So she decided to go out on her own. And it is kind of funny how he comes out here. It's like, hey man, what's up? Don't like my snake delivery? So I'm not sure if he ends up uh, eating it himself or what. But I think he's going to go after her and see if she'll take it the second time. Maybe kind of like green eggs and ham, huh? <laughs> Third time's a charm. All right, just uh, again, uh, we're looking forward to a new season with the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Hopefully we've got a new uh, female there and we'll get to see that cam coming up uh, um, this, this coming year. So back to our presentation here. So just a couple interesting things. You know, on the, on the end of receiving and watching these nest cams, um, if you've watched the Great Spirit Bluff Falcons, if you've watched this nest before, if you've watched others, I mean, nests coming down, us rebuilding nests, us doing whatever we can, uh, just uh, some interesting technology here. Um, this is a nest that's in a barn, you know, that's, uh, that's known, um, and uh, it, uh, you know, you need, an, you need a light source in a nest box like that, so interesting uh, technology. Uh, delivered here and implemented was a sunroof light tube to bring in natural light into the top of the nest box. That's what lights up the nest box. And you can see on the left there's a, 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 a duck, some duct work there and that basically helps um, with the black flies uh, keeping airflow moving through that box and helps deter black flies from coming into the nest box. And the black flies literally will kill uh, those any of the young kestrels if they're not dealt with. So um, that is one way to abate that. 
So let's sh shift here to Falcon Cams. We're going to talk primarily in Falcons uh, and Falcon Cams. We do have other partners um, with Durlin Power and Excel Energy and others. Uh, I'm just going to focus here with the time constraints on Great Spirit Bluff. Um, it was a monumental year this year um, for a number of reasons. Newman returned. Um, I love this shot. It's a solitary Peregrine Falcon sitting at the bluff to the south. Um, we know that uh, um, that's the bluff to the south and uh, um, looking over kind of at the a little bit of lacrosse in the background there but beautiful shot of Newman perched there and question was when is Michelle going to come back because she had been late a couple of years and we had some incidents where she ended up chasing somebody else that was coming in and potentially filling that spot here's our beautiful Falcon for many years, Michelle, and uh, uh, she just never she never showed up. She never came back. Um, she was a, a Hatchier Falcon 2005 from Mawson's Bluff, which is uh, just south of Nelson, Wisconsin, and pretty close to uh, Wabasha, Minnesota, where Grumpy Old Men was filmed. Uh, you guys know Wabasha for that, right? So anyway. That's where she came from, and uh, she did not show up. We had a new female show up, and we got to uh, new, we got to name a new female there. It's Nova, which stands for for female, new female. Um, and you can see both Nova on the left and Newman on the right. They are. I think this is Newman coming in after the th third egg was laid, and it's kind of neat to see that kind of introduction and they will bow and they will each up together and they do this ritual uh, which is one of the neatest things I think to see you know with falcons and in, when I say falcons that means different species of falcon that would be the peregrine falcon the smallest falcon the kestrel does something similar too so Newman and Nova that's who we had this year um, we noticed a few things uh, with Nova, a little bit different. Doesn't keep quite as uh, neat of a, of a nest box or, or nest as uh, Michelle did. There's differences there. She may be younger. She may have different habits. Um, but uh, uh, two of the eggs hatched. One of them actually cracked on an intruder alert exit of the nest box. I think it probably was Newman, if I remember right, and one of the eggs cracked. and. They carried that out, but uh, we had two, two uh, young falcons that hatched beautifully, grew up, and uh, um, you know, kind of a similar story to we. They were named a banding day, Elise and Floyd, and we were watching them, just thinking this was, you know, going to be the coolest year that we could remember, you know, the most recent and one that we were watching, and. Unfortunately, uh, a great horned owl was probably possibly feeding its own young and decided to uh, look for prey in the area and we consecutively lost both of them. It was a very sad, sad, uh, sad time to really acknowledge and just know that we were not going to have young peregrine falcons to watch for the rest of the season. Um, and that goes for our family. Up at the bluff, it's so it's so neat this time of year to watch the Falcons flight training, um, and we just knew we weren't going to get to see that. So, um, like I said, that's life in the raptor world. Will we do some things possibly to try to deter great horned owls? Got a couple ideas uh, um, to try to help stop that from happening, but uh, um, nothing new, and it's been happening uh, for a long, long time along the Mississippi River Valley. Hey, the flyway cam, um, the great Mississippi River flyway, one of the, the, the primary flyways in the continent of North America. Um, countless, countless bird species and raptors migrate through this corridor. Um, it's, it's really amazing cam. Um, it was meant to be a camera uh, that was just like a Zen cam where you are out plopped down in the middle of nature and the spot was going to be out in the middle of the Mississippi River, Lake on Alaska. And that's a great partnership, as I mentioned, with the Bryce Prairie Conservation Association. And 
explore.org and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service out of uh, Rice Prairie, uh, Wisconsin. So a great opportunity for us to learn and watch raptors that are not necessarily nesting, um, mostly eagles. We see some owls out there. We see some peregrine falcons out there. But the migrating waterfowl, the tundra swans, the pelicans, you know, all the other migrating waterfowl, sandhill cranes. This is just, look at this picture. And this is what a morning uh, with beautiful audio. Um, bring it up on your screen and get back to nature and watch the news from nature. That's what I like to say. So a flyway cam started moderated chat in 2019. We had some admirers of that cam that were just chomping at the bit who wanted to uh, start up a chat. You know, hey, a new opportunity to learn, you know, more about than bald eagles, learn more about than peregrine falcons. Uh, so hats off, love what you guys have done with the flyway cam, got that started. Um, you've, you're growing a uh, following and um, it's very neat to see. So this continues to be a source of information and enjoyment for many. Um, this cam is streamed live when the, the visitor center is open at the Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, migration is coming up this fall. We'll get to, we're going to actually going out on Monday to clean a bug swipe off of the camera there and do a little bit of maintenance and checking of things. Uh, but we're coming up on the, the, the season here. It's going to be this fall, coming up soon. Just a couple shots just to show you the majesty of what we see out here. You can see a blurry flock of birds that's lit into the air behind a couple eagles sitting there. And then some Canadian geese, one sitting on one leg with its head tucked. Um, just the amazing sights and sounds there. Um, here's some sandhill cranes, um, some logs in the background. We really had some intense flooding last year. That's what led to the black flies and just that explosion of black flies. Um, we had some sandbars forming out there. Literally, it's like a delta out there in that lake and that water flow changed the landscape. Turtles, that's one of my favorite things to watch this year and I know others. Uh, here's a couple turtles and you can see um, water levels uh, must be okay. We got a a floating log there, a stable log, and they just love to stretch out. I thought eagles and falcons did amazing yoga stretches in the morning and the afternoon. I never knew that turtles did it. We've seen some amazing footage of turtles, some different ones. I know a smooth shell turtle and um, others. Uh, um, our, our fans and our, our mods are becoming experts in turtles now too. Here's an amazing shot. I believe of a, a great white egret and you can see its eye down there underneath it's almost uh, a <laughs> caption this it's like hey where'd my leg go but it's a beautiful shot and um, I believe that their feathers do get more feather like and fluffy like that when uh, at this time of year when the photo was taken I believe that was about a month month and a half ago beautiful shot all right, let's shift on to one of our primary focus programs, and that is peregrine falcon monitoring. Um, it's something that the Raptor Resource Project was founded on, uh, was the return of the peregrine falcon. So continuing on with the monitoring program, now that we're seeing, you know, all these influences of man, uh, you know, and climate change and other things that are influencing birds and bird migration and population, the neonicotinoids and how they can affect and make birds hyper and make them forget that they need to migrate for hours to days. Um, some of the research that's coming out, it's, it's, it's so very important that we have these monitoring programs to steward and just understand what can be happening in this world that is changing. This world that is changing and that we're changing. So. How did it go this year? It was def definitely a different year. Um, with COVID-19, uh, bird banding lab protocol, uh, glove war wearing, anyone touching falcons or other raptors for banding and handling, uh, mask wearing, 
make sure that the virus was not transmitted just in case there was some kind of an issue uh, with the species. So um, we did do our climbing, we did do our banding, we did our activities uh, wearing masks and also wearing gloves. So um, with that said, um, we did have a little bit of a reduction in our program just with the ability to go into some of our uh, uh, traditional sites, some of the power plant sites. We were not able to go in there just because of restrictions um, for COVID and just uh, non-entry of non-essential folks into facilities. And we understood that, it, you know, it was, it was too bad. But uh, so less sites visited this year. We had 16 sites visited, but we, we kept busy and we banded 50 falcons. And with our high numbers around 70, we thought that that was great. Um, and that number does not include, you know, we, we went to a couple sites where they surprised us a little bit. It seemed like some of them maybe had uh, started the season a little bit earlier. Maybe, maybe not, but uh, we had falcons that were running on us and we just can't try to risk banning them when they might possibly pre fledge early. So that number's a little bit shy than it would have been if, uh, if we would have been able to ban every falcon that we saw out there. So there's more out there than, than the 50 that we banded. Oh, just a couple quick things. Historic year at Effigy Mounds. 21 years after the second year of the historic release by Bob Anderson at Effigy Mounds National Monument with uh, help from the Park Service. I know Rodney Rolvang and, and others and our own Raptor Resource Project folks, uh, Dave Kester and John Dingley, board members. Um, they made that trek in the Mosquito hot summer uh, or, or uh, I guess it would have been spring months uh, um, when those young falcons needed to be fed and fledged that 18, uh, uh, 18 young falcons on a cliff with a rock line chamber and year or two after that was the first successful repopulations of some of the historic iries that had been waiting on for, for years. So 21 years after we were out banding falcons uh, at, at uh, Fire Point, which is the active nest that's at FG Mounds. Return of a nesting pair to Castle Rock in Fountain City, Wisconsin. A beautiful cliff face there. You can imagine, it's called Castle Rock. Um, we'll put some stuff out here in a couple weeks, I think, uh, just a little bit more information about, you know, just show you what it's like uh, during our fa falcon banding activities now that things are dying down with timing and after the fledge uh, we'll show you some of that stuff but just a, a really monumental year and a very enjoyable year for for uh, working in a challenging environment with covid virus restrictions and um, not anybody traveling in the same vehicles and and lots of stuff in in hot weather so here's a shot uh, me and amy and this is at FG Mounds National Monument there, north of Marquette, Iowa. And we named, uh, we had one young male and one female. We named one after Bob Anderson, one was Robert, and another of one of his falconer friends, long-term falconer friends, Maggie Jones. So Robert and Maggie, hopefully you are fledged and flying free and testing out your new wings. Just a shot from Redbird Bluff, a couple, I think this is from two years ago. Just such a beautiful shot, decided to leave it in there. It is what we love doing, and this is what gets us out there. It's what gets us out on the bluffs, hanging, it's exciting, but also it's very rewarding to look into the eyes of these young peregrine falcons and know that you're part of a group that's helping steward and watch and monitor them. So let's move on here. What about Decora? What's been going on here? Um, you got to see some amazing video from Iowa Outdoors um, when Underbot and, and uh, his crew came and filmed the capture and the transmitting uh, uh, attachment of transmitter and release of D27. And we are watching, I believe, in our third year. Uh, you know, she's up in northern Canada now, and we're still watching her in her travels and living vicariously through D27. And, and Brett and his crew are gathering research and tracking that and gathering that for the research community, you know, for eagles. 
and adding to that knowledge base. What happened this year? We decided to move forward with two more transmitters and two eaglets to keep this study going. Um, D35 was transmitted and D36 before her. So we have two eaglets now to add to that mix that will a brother-sister pair. And we're really excited to see what happens there. But uh, let's take a look here. Um, if you look closely at this photo, um, 36 and 35, um, they are both sitting on the Y branch. And you can see the uh, transmitter, uh, the satellite transmitter antenna um, off of their back wing. The front of their wing off to the right side there. They're looking very healthy. They're looking happy. They're looking in great shape. And that is the best news. We got to track D35 this morning. If you guys watched that, if you didn't, go back and take a look. It's really cool to see how we can get visuals on these eagles when we get close to that radio tracking tra transmitter. So here's just a quick shot. And please go to our website, take a look at some of the posts that Amy's been putting up from Brett and the Eagle Valley crew. Um, here is D27 all up, and I'm going to try to say this, Potonikip, Potonikip Lake, all the way up in northern Canada with those Canucks. Um, so we're going to get to see what happens there. She's, she's up there again this year. She likes that area. We'll see how long she stays and when she decides to, to migrate back south. What's been going on for D35? Um, we see a map here. I think the yellow marks are more recent and the red are less recent. But you can see that there's quite a bit of activity down by Trout Run Creek to the west, over right in the bend area there. Uh, and uh, there's some woods there. There's that nice little cliff face over there. We've been seeing them bathing over there. We've been seeing them eat food. So. Um, that's, uh, they really haven't uh, gone that far out of their territory. Here's D36, similar pattern. A couple more trips uh, down south to the farm over there and maybe a, a trip or two up onto the bluff over to the east. So it's been really cool just to see the limited amount of data that we have. Um, classroom and developing the next generation of conservationists. This is part of our core mission, as I mentioned there. And it's one of the things that is the most rewarding for our teacher crews and our, our teaching chat group, uh, our moderated chat for the classroom. And we've got four teachers, two practicing and two retired that uh, actually three practicing and one retired that are putting modules together about how to use the, the Decor Eagle content and the Decor Eagle live cam to teach kids. It's just been an amazing thing to watch and it, it was very obvious to jump on this and attach as much uh, effort as we can to grow this program and it's been so rewarding to see um, uh, the, the lead teachers, uh, Lori Carnes and others, um, along with our Vice President Dr. Laura Johnson and our, our committee you know, they've been doing an awesome job putting these programs together. So um, it's probably higher than 1,500 participating classrooms. That was 2018, 2019. Um, I'm sure we've grown from that. And uh, it's always cool to see these kids come in, and they are definitely going to win if you try to test their knowledge in a quiz show. I guarantee you. They will come in on our moderated you know, chat for all ages and they will serve as guest moderators so it's really cool to see. Um, Lori gave us that talk about uh, how she's used that yesterday and we're going to put together and post a little bit better version of that. Apologize for uh, um, if that wasn't nice and smooth there um, but we'll have that out and teaching inspiring conservations of our future that is so important today. Look at the smiles on these faces of these kids. Um, Math, the NGSS studies, the core uh, math studies here, kids doing some, some math calculations. Weight, you know, what is, you know, uh, comparative weights? 
of eagles and young eaglets and nests and things like that. All different kinds of lessons that they do. Teaching verbs, how to mantle. Look at the kids mantling and showing their best eagle mantles. You can just, it's almost like you're right there with them. And then soaring, the kids soaring. So that's the kind of thing that uh, uh, Lori has developed and, and our other teachers, Otter Squad and other classes that are using this stuff out there. Um, uh, Georgia Deb and, and, and others, uh, it's, it's so neat to see this program grow. Uh, just a quick shout out and a direction of where do you go to find this stuff? With COVID, you know, we had rolled out a interface here that uh, um, uh, was expertly put together by Amy and her husband Ken and just uh, in, the, in the, the, the committee group to put this out there and get these lesson plans in a searchable format for both classrooms to use and for also families. I mean, we got homeschool people, we got families that want lesson plans and things like that. So it's been really neat to be able to provide this kind of thing to classrooms out there. Um, so anyway, growing strong and with a great future, love our Eagle education program. And part of that is our autumn migration banding station in Hawk Hill. That is a collaborative project with Luther uh, College here right in Decorah. And we uh, have had a successful two-year grant year uh, phase. And then last year was our third year uh, uh, out of the grant year. And um, it's, just, it's, it's been an amazing program to have college students. They get a $500 stipend. They come out and they get to learn how to trap, ban, take scientific measurements, um, and basically be the monitors of raptors and then ban them, release them, and see that, that uh, raptor out back into the wild. Um, why do we ban them? Um, people, can ban, people can observe bans in other areas where people are doing bird counts, if you can get close enough. You know, people report things on eBird, the bird banding data comes up and we can, do, we can track some things uh, even before the bird uh, possibly uh, uh, is deceased and, and finding the band that way. So trapping success, usually red-tailed hawks, sharp-shinned hawks, cooper's hawks, northern goshawk, rough-legged hawks. I know we've had a couple almost falcons, almost eagles. Um, students become proficient at trapping, handling, IDing, aging, banding wild hawks. Um, we also have raptors module that uh, our master banner Dave Kester has worked with Emily Neal in the past and some of the local teachers going in and getting birds in front of the first through seventh grade students. And then homeschool and college students have come and visited um, these banding activities. Might be a little bit different looking this year with uh, the virus. Um, probably fewer folks wearing masks, some bottles of hand sanitizer right next to the binoculars. Um, so we will adapt. Here's a shot of one of our volunteers, interns, and now somebody who's been working with us quite closely with the Raptor Resource Project, Sophia Landis, and she's got a beautiful red-tailed hawk there getting ready to release that. Um, I've held them like that and released them, and there's no feeling like that. It is an amazing experience. Here is Dave Kester and Emily Neal in front of one of the, lo the local Decora uh, elementary school classes. And they're just getting talking and getting ready to release a hawk. Dave's got it in a tube there under his arm. The Robert Anderson Memorial Scholarship Fund, that's still out there. We're on our second year. We're going to be funding another $1,500 scholarship to a student that's going to be studying environmental studies or something similar to the agenda of what uh, we would like to see uh, through the Raptor Resource Project to help uh, fund a student. Um, so that second year is coming up, pretty amazing that that's in place and we've already gotten that far. Quick Philippine Eagle update, um, Bird of Prey, which is an amazing story, a love story between, uh, of, between Neil Reddig, his wife Laura, and, uh, and trying to do what they can with the Philippine Eagle Foundation to help uh, raise awareness and save, literally save a species. Um, the movie that they worked on with Cornell Lab of Ornithology, an amazing movie, Bird of Prey, that launched in the Philippines. They've had great success. 
uh, educating the native Filipinos and kids and just gathering uh, attention. COVID has really put a, a, a big uh, <laughs> uh, damper on activities, including a possibility of us helping them with their breeding program with some cam assistance. And if we ever gonna possibly do a, a jungle cam or something like that, um, that has all been put on hold for the moment. Um, but the Bird Prey movie is out there. You can check it, launch it. You can buy it, watch it. It's amazing. Let's take a look at that. Um, I'm just going to show you real quickly a quick trailer here of that. These creatures are masterpieces of nature. If you find it in your first try, you are a very lucky person. What do you think? I think it's generous to call that a hike. That's, we're, that's climbing. You know what the good news is? We're an eighth of our way there. <laughs> it's got this beautiful crest that stands up, these beautiful blue eyes, and it's got bone crushing, powerful feet. I just saw that if I can be quick, we might have a chance, over. I gotta get this camera built. You gotta think clearly so you don't drop anything. <laughs> Given the rarity of this bird, we cannot take chances. All of our islands suffered deforestation. No one was watching, so they just cut with impunity. A baby is so fragile. I think a, a cold rain could kill a young eagle in an hour and a half, two hours. We have to move on to attitude. And that's something you feel in your guts. Where other people find excuses not to do things, you find a way to make it happen. It's a race against time. And time's not on their side. What it has for the human spirit is immeasurable. Okay, you ready? Two, three. I personally cannot stand the thought of these masterpieces becoming extinct. And so there's a handful of people that want to do something about it. And I'm one of them. All right. Isn't that amazing? Every time I see that, I can't uh, imagine uh, uh, what it's like to try to uh, save a species. And well, others have done it with falcons here in this country and with legislation and other things. The bald eagle was brought back in this country. So uh, things are looking good, um, as good as they can right now. Um, for the Philippine Eagle, but uh, time will tell whether the will of the human people and the Filipinos will be able to uh, preserve that species. So I did want to show one thing here. If you are interested in watching this, it's as easy as going to your Friday movie night, going to Bird of Prey uh, website. Um, let me just check and see what that is. And you can either watch this. I think it's like $15 rental on Amazon, iTunes, or Vimeo On Demand. And most all of that money, I understand, goes through Cornell Lab of Ornithology back to the Philippine Eagle Foundation to work on helping preserve this 
uh, most endangered eagle um, and such a beautiful eagle. All right, let's talk lastly here about what's coming up for 2021. Um, Nest Cam Prep is kind of going to come up sooner than you know it. It's happening for me and us right now. We're looking at possible camera ordering and testing, and that's all going on right now. We're busy, busy. Um, that'll be with our eagle nests and our falcon nests and things. That's going to be September through November. Um, future assistance with the breeding program in the Philippine Eagle Cam. You know, that, like I said, was put on hold, but we've uh, been gathering funds from, from you all. And we encourage you, if you want to help out, to donate towards. You can specifically say, I want this to go to the Philippine Eagle effort. Um, Eagle Valley Flyway Cam. We are going to revamp uh, Brett Mandernak's Eagle Valley Cam. We're working on that, getting it set up similar to the Flyway Cam and giving it a, a makeover. And uh, hopefully we'll have that ready to go before this fall migration. And our two partners uh, um, down in Missouri, um, Chuck and John, um, they say that the Missouri turkey vultures are back. So we might uh, be able to possibly look at a turkey vulture camera for 2021. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, it's been a long time since I've seen vomit being thrown out of the uh, beak of a, <laughs> a turkey vulture. Uh, so, or feeding their young like that. So that'd be very neat. So that's just a little bit about what's going on here. Um, we totally rebuilt the Great Spirit Bluff Falcon Cam after lightning strike last fall. Um, we've been doing a lot of rebuilding, a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So again, you know, just uh, keep that in mind uh, um, when you're looking for somebody to uh, uh, donate to. Think about the Raptor Resource Project and the programs that we are working on here. It's very much appreciated. Just wanted to throw out here, and we're going to kind of put some links to some of this stuff. I know where to go out and find out, you know, Nature Raptor Force, about the uh, different raptors and American Eagle, the story that Neil and Bob told about uh, the Decor Eagles and American Eagle, uh, that Nature Special, Iowa Public Television, Iowa PBS Now, Eagles of Decora, Decoding the Driftless, which you're going to get a chance to see tonight, which uh, has the Raptor Resource Project and our falcon banding and monitoring activities. Um, where to, to uh, order that and watch that if you want to. The Secret Life of Owls, you know, we've seen and shown that here before. That's about owls and uh, Neil and Laura were uh, uh, helped put that together. Bird of Prey we just talked about and that is bold because it's right out there and it's important. And then just recently um, with BBC Natural History Unit, uh, Simon Baxter and the folks at uh, PBS Nova. We just uh, can't say enough uh, about how proud we are to have Eagle Power out there um, and uh, to see uh, the Golden Eagle and the studies there and then have the uh, the Decor Eagles, the world famous Decor Eagles as a part of that movie. So um, that I think is uh, for sale, which I'm going to be working on getting my copy to have in hand. So Anyway, we'll put a list together of where you can get some of these. Uh, our RP is, or our board members have had a hand in, in all of these movies, so it's really part of our outreach to educate and teach people about raptors. So it's thank you time. Um, thanks so much uh, to all of you viewers out there. Um, thanks, uh, a huge thanks, many thanks. Landowners, we could not do this without you. Uh, without your partnership and letting us come visit you and work with you with these birds of prey on your property, uh, we just would not be able to do what we do. Um, and you are a partner. Other partners out there, explore.org, Charlie Annenberg and his crew, uh, we, we thank you so much and, and the technical staff there for how you've helped improve our program and help us get our streams out. Um, City of Decorah here in, in Decorah, Iowa, the great... Uh, city of Decorah, Iowa, that we love to come down here and watch eagles and many other great things to see. Um, conservation associations like the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, Bryce Prairie Conservation Association, and, and others. Our moderators, our chat moderators, uh, both on the Explore platform and on our platform, 
um, what you do is amazing and you are volunteers and volunteering your your own uh, uh, time and effort so we can't thank you enough Facebook and our other media our website uh, uh, mostly Amy I think Amy for the website but Facebook uh, um, all the Facebook volunteers that answer questions and funnel questions to us and to our board members and our experts um, cam operators you've done an amazing job working from all around the country to manage these cams and and be armchair cinematographers for the world and showing your love for nature um, videographers um, your next step in the line and thank you so much um, we've used some of your videos some we have not got to that doesn't make them any less valuable um, just love seeing the roundups that Amy puts together with write-ups that you guys um, you're we couldn't do that without you so thank you so much and teachers um, you are a part of our core mission um, we want to bring more of you on any teachers that are listening to this right now any families that know teachers that you would like to have your teachers using the decor eagle content to teach your kids in the classroom you've got that opportunity so with that I will say Thank you all, and I'm so glad that we pulled this off. <laughs> um, we pulled this off. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, uh, Internet. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, uh, we, we pulled this off. It's, it's not over yet. I want to tell you guys our, our, our featured event tonight at 5 o'clock coming up in less than an hour is Decoding the Drift Lesson. We're going to live stream the original full uh, resolution of that movie. It's won a lot of awards. Um, it's, uh, it's really, it's, it's very meaningful too. We got a special guest that's coming to talk and answer some questions. Um, you'll get to meet that special person. So thanks again. We'll end there and we will go into Eagle Cam mode until five o'clock. Get your seat uh, ready, get your popcorn, get your cold refreshment on this warm hot day and uh, um, see you soon.